सदगुरु योगी राम सूरत कुमार की जय नमस्ते नमस्ते एंड वेलकम एवरीवन टू सचिन टुडे सतगुरु श्री मोजी बाबा की जय Question. You know what they say about uh, intermittent fasting? <laughs> the first couple of days, and uh, I've had this experience, is that the first couple of days, there's a bit of uh, tiredness, you see? There's um, uh, sometimes a headache, you see? What happens in the first... Intermittent fasting is when you don't eat for uh, a number of hours every day. So 16 hours you don't eat and 8 hours you can eat. So what happens in that is that for the first 2-3 days the body struggles. Is it? Why does it struggle? Because it has forgot about the generator. It has got used to just burning the fresh fuel supply which is in the stomach is it? and getting energy from there. But it has not got used because of our modern lifestyle. Not used to you know, burning the fat reserves, going to whatever is stored up, you see. So it struggles. This is a bit like satsang. <laughs> so you feel like you struggle without this uh, device called the mind or intellect, you see. But it is only because you are not used to just this greater supreme, supreme intelligence which is running this entire play. So what happens mostly, you complain that without the mind, but I am lost. How can I live like this? You see, that is just the withdrawal symptoms from the constant nourishment of ego, of individuality, of the idea that I can know this life, I can uh, figure out what it is about. But beyond this sort of mental knowing, beyond your intellectual figuring, there is something which knows in a greater way. It is not a thing, but you have to use some language. So just like this, as we withdraw from this need to conclude, need to say that this is what it is.
the mind feels like this um, sort of state is a dumb state you let just become dumb or something you see just like uh, the fear will come when your body is struggling in the first two three days of fasting is like you're just going to die you can't live like this <laughs> you see and you look at uh, this beautiful kind of imagery of all the sages yogi ji go so so is it and he's just sitting like a innocent child is it and he taught us one of the most beautiful lessons there is to learn don't give credence to the possibility of anything but god if god is what you want then why do you accept the possibility of anything else so from this child like intelligence from this child like innocence this supreme intelligence can arise the words of the sages you see our mind lives in the opposites mm-hmm. of right and wrong true and false you see if you like in some judgment you will get a true representation of what is but that is not the boundary of your existence that is just the boundary of your intellect to conclude this is this and this is not this these are just the boundaries of our intellect but your life your existence is much vaster than that the true true knowingness which gives light to these minor ways of knowing or perceiving is it is much vaster than we can imagine we can perceive we can fathom much vaster so you don't have to fit this ocean into a glass you don't have to get it you see what 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 would it mean to get it that you captured some valid representation in this instrument called the mind would that be or into the your perceptual vision would that be to get it into your experiential uh, capabilities isn't it that's how we define get it isn't it i figured it out or i saw something or i had the experience of something is it but it is never just in that it is not in opposition to that but it is not just in that what are you beyond these what is holding your existence up what intelligence is that what makes you exist is being this atma so are these just going to be like fantastical concepts for the mind to play with brahman atma self absolute nothing no thingness you see we can play for many many hundreds of lifetimes with these but is there a way to not get caught up in the concepts and get a taste for yourself in reality taste your truths as long as you are happy to say 
yes yes no no yes yes no no this is right this is wrong this is the way i think about it this is what i feel is true okay yeah? yeah? then this will not be so appealing for you this way or that way if still duality has its use enjoy it no trouble at all but i'm going to be honest and say that if the juice is still there then maybe what is being said here may not be so important not seem so exciting is it because no promise here of any taste which is perceptual but if you are done with this roller coaster if you are done with your own judgments about things If you're tired of your conclusions, you look at your conclusions and you say, "What is this about? Is it really like this? Do I actually know any of this?" Yeah. If this is what your own mind is feeling like to you. and join me here but there is no attachment to this roller coaster it can play there is no aversion to it either see yourself with a different set of eyes meet yourself in a fresh way beyond concept beyond perception what is the distance between any opposites big and small true and false right and wrong inside and outside up and down is it the distinction is just a thought it is just a notion there is nothing inherently big or inherently small nothing inherently inside or outside right or wrong and inside and outside is very easy to check cuz i don't feel like there will be anyone in this room who is not said ah when i go inside i find peace or i find some emotion or sensation anything okay? but nobody has been able to tell me where this inside is inside of what is it 
the inside where you go to find peace it is inside of what and these are the simplest things which we don't question because we take them for granted you see the whole egoic notion is built around these notions which seem like stupid to question they seem like but of course inside is inside outside is outside but i say inside what even this we do not know and we claim to know how the world should be we do not know how to speak a word move a finger you might have a theory about it you might say oh my brain fires some neurons and these actions happen but nobody here knows how to fire a neuron <coughs> so what is this intelligence that is running all of this and if there is a will it must belong to just this one this intelligence because this mythical individual has been looked for and except some blurry evidence <laughs> we have not found any real one so don't be fearful of that which you do not know we hate it actually in our heart is it we hate not knowing so we quick to replace that fear with the judgment remain in the not knowing it can feel a bit like some tough medicine is it it can feel a bit like some tough medicine because nobody is holding on to a belief knowing that it is false whatever you believe you think it is true so when someone comes and says but what do you actually know is it it can seem like an attack almost now what is happening for most of you is that you are advanced spiritual seekers yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and because uh, advanced spiritual seekers you know a lot of spirituality and because you know a lot of spirituality you may think that you are right about it is 
and you'll be quick to have in your encyclopedic spiritual knowledge you'll have all the most credible sources but all i know is what bhagwan said is it or maharaj maharaj said mm-hmm. yeah? or papa ji said or guru ji said <laughs> said is it But what are they saying? They are saying that all of what we are saying is just thorns used to re- remove any embedded thorns that you might have, and then to be thrown away. They are not saying that I can capture reality in some. concept of truth they are saying all i can do at best is point so we've been playing this game this last era didn't go so well <laughs> it is also just a thought <laughs> but uh, look at those things which you feel that you are absolutely certain about is it let's put a twist to this game today look at those things which you feel you are absolutely certain about and i have the easy job as every time which is to say that it is just a thought that which you think you are absolutely right about is it absolutely certain about it. and see i mean i look at it and if i find that actually it is not a thought you <laughs> see <laughs> <laughs> uh, you got it you see <laughs> open to all possibilities okay so shall we play this okay so what are you absolutely certain about and don't go into turiya meditation right and again it's just some fear is it just some like uh, thing no it's uncomfortable i'll play this inwardly breathing is happening breathing is happening hmm. it's just a thought you can do that yes <laughs> <laughs> what is breathing okay <laughs> yeah i can notice okay. but even otherwise even otherwise is it happening then what would papa ji mean that nothing is ever happen so the, okay so just to clarify if someone knew so one is when she said we are okay she had the sense that it's just a term you see and there is this term it just has meaning based on what our mind has given it so she said, okay that way but even to say breathing is happening can you really also say that all of this that you are witnessing right now is not just a memory it seems to be happening in the now yeah of course that's so a, to that extent may not be memory but can we conclude that i know for certain that this is not me just revisiting a memory <laughs> can't conclude this. so what if all of this is not actually here you're just visiting a daydream what are we absolutely certain about mm-hmm. 
and I'm not going to deconstruct it in this way because then the deconstruction itself can become a new set of thoughts. You see? So I'm just going to say it's just a thought and then you can explore for a bit and then maybe the next time you come you can say but I saw and it's not a thought. <laughs> Round. Yeah? Earth is round. Earth is round. It's just a thought. <laughs> that the earth itself is just a thought. Only you exist. Only you exist is a thought. <laughs> <laughs> Only you. Okay, so something here wants to deconstruct it very. Um, Simply also, but um, it's, uh, there's a deeper essence to what you're saying, but if only you exist, then the term you does not have meaning. You is what is the opposite of you? You is everything. Yes, so what does you mean? Why don't you say only I exist? Because there is no one. I, it's all you and me. See, so this you is in opposition to I. Yes. You see? <laughs> you see? But, but if, it, if it is all inclusive, it is not in opposition to anything. No, I see you in you, so... I see you in see you. I see you in you. You mean you sees you in you, because only you exist. No. <laughs> <laughs> you see, I appreciate the the feeling behind it, of course, but I'm just saying that if we feel like this is uh, this is like a representative of truths, you see, rather than just a pointer, then we are making a mistake even with that. You see? And if this is a beautiful pointer, which it is, then what is the taste of that now? What can be spoke? What can be spoken about the experience of this? So this is the beauty, that it is completely apparent. The complete, complete, full truth of what you are is fully apparent to you. Only seems to get clouded up a bit when you start thinking about it. Not the appearance of appearance and disappearance of thoughts, but the belief that these tiny concepts have an ability to represent reality. You see? If you wrote an entire book, you would still not be able to describe this room. So, if words are not even enough to describe your phenomenal existence, what words will describe your non-phenomenal, the unmanifest? Love, but as soon as I say it, it's a... <laughs> it's a condition. <laughs> <laughs> when you say unconditional love, immediately it's a condition. Really? Really? It is um, somewhat like, uh, like Ribu saying that step away from the duality of even I am Brahman. Really? And you hear that in your life. What? Aham Brahma Asmi. <laughs> that is held close to our hearts. You see? I mean, duality of I am Brahman and she is a Vedantin also, so she might be getting a prick on hearing that. You see? But it's uh, straightforward that if it is just naturally true that you are Brahman, what use is the assertion? The assertion only gives uh, credence to the possibility of it not being true. Nobody is saying, I have a nose. 
भगवान स्टिक्स दैट यू यूजिंग टू लाइट the funeral pyre with the stick also has to be thrown is it because we, otherwise what ends up happening many times is you end up making idols of the sticks is like taking the road signs and considering them to be the destination If the sign says this way, you pick up that sign and put it in your house and say, "I got it." <laughs> <laughs> and what is everything pointing to? In spirituality, everything is, at least in Vedanta, there's the truth is unchanging. so apparently all of this is pointing to one truth which is unchanging if it is unchanging where must it be now it must be unchangingly here is it before the duality of here and there it must be because it is unchanging here and there keep changing so who wants to test that in a way i feel to say that my only interest in speak is in speaking to those yeah. those who want to test the validity of this that here and now the truth is complete and full and handling dealing with your objections about that <laughs> i'm okay with that but not so much like this and that and this and the other is there enough enough places for that but here i want to point you to this unchanging reality to use some terms and the trick is for you to not judge it immediately stay with the taste of it for a bit and then give your report Aren't we certain that the unchanging reality is here? That seems to be a certainty. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's just a thought. <laughs> I'm saying it cheaply, but it's just a thought. You see, so let me give you an example of this. And this, uh, upon hearing this uh, commentary, actually, I became a lot more open to. Uh, the buddhist pointings and teachings because traditionally the conditioning here was very vedantin you see so uh, nagarjuna at one point was questioned because he said that even emptiness itself is empty of even emptiness you see so everything is just so empty and uh, anyway I'll, i'll get to what i used to feel about that later but then he was attacked by the buddhists saying 
then are you saying that the four noble truths are not true like the buddha is not true is not the truth see then nagarjuna explain that the truth is independent of any concept that we might hold about it including that including the concept of buddha itself including the concept of emptiness itself also because the, that's why is that emptiness is empty even of itself is it? and then his uh, student explained further and he said that any clinging any holding on is it is suffering and when we hold on to even the highest spiritual concepts is it then that is just another way to invite suffering in a way if you are to share more about it we can say that if it is true then it cannot be dependent on us having that concept and does any concept truly represent what is anyway you see that is why all these sages saying thorns sticks pointers road signs Is it? Because what they are pointing to is, it? is beyond the opposite of change and unchange. Is it beyond the opposites of false and reality also? Is it? So at best these are pointers. Is it? All of this which can be fathomed by the mind, by the intellect, is it? Is in the range of limitation from the smallest to the largest from the false to the truth from the inside to the outside you see this is the range of these devices called the mind intellect but your range is much greater than that you see this is the range of our mental knowing but true true knowingness is much broader than that in actuality change and un- not change does not mean anything for it even falsity and reality mean nothing for it it has no distinctions see, even distinction and no distinction mean nothing for it that's why we can just struggle with these words and try to point is it like the zen master was saying the other day <coughs> unnest is the intellect is it so then when we are not nesting there you can feel like we are falling i'm paraphrasing a lot <laughs> so uh, so you can feel that uh, you're falling is it but this is auspiciousness this sense of being a bit out of moves being not able to place this and that is great auspiciousness so it has to be said that uh, even the certainty of the unchanging reality is just a thought and even that is just a thought is just a thought is it <laughs> and before that there was i have no power control god is in charge all there is is just a thought is just a thought yes teacher teaches painter paints but thinker is just a thought yeah is just a thought the mind does not like the word just in the statement it does not like the word just <laughs> and that is just a thought
I am a failure in this world and I am using spirituality to feel good is just a thought. <laughs> I am eager to hear that it's just a thought, is just a thought. <laughs> <laughs> and also aware of the sense of genuine seeker that is arising as the opposite thought is just a thought. Which I want to hold on to is also just a thought. Thank you, Father. Okay, we keep that one. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this could just be a memory. I mean, why is it not? I'm not asserting, by the way, it is no, what it is. No, no, but I'm saying, okay, and when we, if, if even like your breath, if, like, could just, this experience of a memory, then you can't say one thing which is not part of this memory, I mean, in, of this, uh, so the whole thing is gone, then. Anything, if I say pain, Headache, this, that, yeah. up, down, will go away. If it's like that, dreams is bad, yeah. it's not bad. So, <laughs> this is a classic, this is a simpler way to put it. It's yeah. a classic conundrum, right? Where the teacher asks, is it not possible that tonight when you sleep, yeah. we have a repeat of this exact same conversation? Yeah. It is possible. Yeah. So, is there a way you can tell me that this is not that? No. So we cannot be certain. So, so when I look at when you said like when when Papa Ji says that nothing happened, how could he? Make I also such want to say sorry. Thing? I want to also say something very beautiful on top of that, yeah. which is that coming to the truth is not to come to the truth as a certainty. Yeah. You see, it is to lose all our certainties. In a way, it is like what Bhagwan says: true knowledge is just the dropping of faults. It is not that you come to know something which is now, this is true knowledge. You see? And if you just get a sense of this, you see? get a sense of this, you will become much lighter. You see? Because otherwise you are grasping for something which you feel like will be the ultimate truth. You see? But it is the grasping itself which is false. Now see? So, so like when you, when you said that how can you say that, how could he say nothing ever happened? Yes. <clears throat> and then it is, so intellectually it felt like that was an answer, because I see this is a dream. I mean, in an intellectual way I can say that. But if I just, if I just took it as a pointer and let it drop off, then the, 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 the this is now, I'm going to say it's just a thought or not, right? So this is like, never have I known myself not to be. I mean, I have no experience in this experiencing that I am not there. That something is there, but I am not here. Uh, what you're saying is that I've never had the experience that there was nothing, including the I am. Is it like that? I have never had the experience that something exists, but I am not there by when it exists. Meaning that I never had the experience of not being, uh, not knowing my own uh, existence in a self. You know, not, not knowing my it's just a thought. That's a de exact definition of sleep state anyway. Oh? Sleep state anyway, what you just said. Yeah. See, that uh, I know but I am not there. No, 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 not that I know that I'm not there. I didn't mean that. I said I never have the experience of that I don't, I'm not there in a sense that Oh, you know, that was there, but I was not there. Like something yeah, else was there, yeah, but I'm just, not there. Just a thought. But even in a sleep state, the, 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 the voice which says, I am this, that, and I like this, is not there. Exactly, that's what I'm right? saying. But you still don't have the feeling that you're not there. I mean, you don't have some thought which says, oh, And I'm what not wakes there. up? That, that, that's what I, have to find. I mean, uh, yeah. what wakes up is a thought, maybe then. 
it is a thought. <laughs> if we can just conclude that it is thought, it's fine. Because <laughs> the I thought, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Another another way of uh, saying what Bhagwan said about true knowledge is the dropping, just the dropping of the falls, and it being naturally present is the same as saying that when you let go of this I thought the, all there is is the self or the truth you see now the I thought is central to all of our you see thought system now you might believe and this is where the first statement comes is that this I thought has to move to from the false I to a true I and that is real enlightenment of freedom you see but uh, it is not that it is when you let go of all false references to I the truth is just apparent so the game is much simpler for you and much more difficult for the mind you see because the mind would much rather prefer okay I'm going to drop the false position and come to the true position you see come from the false position of I am just a person to the truth of I am Brahman, Aham Brahmasi, Asmi. <laughs> so, but it is not that. Uh, that. That much? Now, make no reference to yourself. Yeah. And what is apparent to you? Let everything be as it is. Don't say this is I or you, me or mine me or other. Leave the world unlabeled. What is naturally here? This is the doorway to going beyond your mind. This now. And don't take these words too seriously. They are they're just nonsense as well. Okay, but, they, but something. Really. They are like pointers to. There is nothing inherently true about these words. They are also like special brand of nonsense. But <laughs> is it? But somehow we seem to have sometimes this. <coughs> I'm still trying to capture it, grasp at it, and capture it in your mental framework. Or oh, that seems to be a little gone. And it can be. It's okay. Either way is okay. And the annoyance that the I is not going. The annoyance that I is not going. <laughs> where is it? Where is it not? Where is it that it is not going? Show me. I give you thousand dollars right now if you show me. Show me that. Where is it? It's not there when I shot it. <laughs> <laughs> it's not there, but it's not going. <laughs> now that's where he's end of you. <laughs> it's just a thought, my dear. It has never come that it can go. It is just a thought. That is why Bhagavan called it the I thought. He didn't say I entity. <laughs> the I thing. He didn't say the I thing. He said the I thought. 
It is just a thought, a notion. As much notional as saying that there's a green uh, eared Martian sitting next to you right now. <laughs> just a notion. So how will that green ear eared Martian go? Get rid of it. Come on, Nitin, you can do it. <laughs> Get rid of that green eared Martian. <laughs> <laughs> How to get rid of that which never came except as a thought. I thought. And no thought comes and stays actually. What your job is then? The opposite. The next thought which comes, hold on to it so it does not go. Okay? And you tell me when you did it. So we've established the I is nothing but a thought and it, it seems to be sticky. So let's see how a thought can actually stick. So the next thought that comes, just hold on to it. Just make sure it doesn't go. <laughs> can you do it? Who can do it? <laughs> Easy. Even when you chant it, <laughs> even if you chant it, there is a space between them. I am ready to give all of you the certificate that you are completely free right now in this moment. You are the one zoomed out and say, but I am still not like him. Is it? Or uh, I still have anger, lust, greed, fear, is it? this kind of thing. These judgments you just make about who you are making these you don't know. <laughs> it's, it's much simpler than we think it is. In fact, in a way it is too simple for the mind. That is why this grasping is suffering. You see? Grasping at the air, <laughs> thinking that you are the limited object, but you are beyond even the space in which all of that is happening. Same. Father, when you ask your uh, questions, we struggle a lot to some answers, but uh, I remember one beautiful saying, Zen, Zen master has said this, in Zen there is no looking for answers, it's, it's just like dropping all the questions, yeah. it's so true. Yes. Is that an answer? <laughs> it's just a thought, it's just a thought, it's not an answer, I'm not looking for any answer. Given a hopeless <laughs> <laughs> Even this you know. I don't think it's just an expression coming up right now, but I'm not sure. This you know. 
Is that true? <laughs> so then how are you dealing with How are you dealing with this this scene? <laughs> Overload this is <laughs> Everything that comes out of this mouth is a lie, and as I'm saying this, it feels true. So then, <laughs> very much like a koan. <laughs> of outward keep quiet or speak you see we are not speaking about that at all right uh, it is not a, a statement of what um, phenomenal appearances should appear as the body you see? or what you should be doing outwardly or not just to put it simply you see? it is just in a way this clenched fist you see Internally, as a, as a, like clench face internally, just open up, you see? You see? and then words coming, no words coming. <coughs> you see? We're used to drawing conclusions about us in the way of how the body is representing us. You see? Therefore, I should then just keep quiet. You see? But then you might keep quiet outwardly, but suffer inwardly because you might be like, I just want to tell him off, you know, <laughs> like that. This is like that. So, so the keeping quiet that the sages have referred to is just a simple openness inwardly. You see, why would the sages who are speaking so much, you see, then keep saying keep quiet, keep quiet? You see, because inwardly they're quiet. Then they're seeing that this mouth is moving, this hand is moving and these thoughts can come and go but they are just open you see? so this is that absence of egoic belief is true silence you see? so whether words are moving or not moving Guru Kripa ke Velamit how you speak a word Yeah. How did you just say how? Is it? Yeah, it's moving. You're blinking, your eyes went up, they went down. All of this is just happening. Is it? The one who claims to take credit for all of this is, it? is non-existent. The individual one. So these are just waves on the surface of the ocean. They will move. So this ocean starts feeling like my now my this wave should not go more than this or it should stay just like that or something like this. You see? Then be a strange belief for the ocean to have, you see. In the same way, when you as consciousness, you as God itself start saying that this is what I should do as this individual person, you see? this just this uh, just this one appearance amongst all the appearances within me. Is it? then you're still considering yourself to be that limited entity. Don't make a reference to I anywhere in what you see and what you don't see. Then how is it? Or put your hand in front like that. Yeah, And this hand is also there. What is the difference? What makes that you and this not you? That appearance is you. This appearance is not you. What made it so? 
just just a thought. You see, children did not have this. You see, children did not have this. We were taught this. I keep taking these examples from when my kids were small, and many time I remember uh, telling my son and daughter, "Where is your head?" And they would point to this mm-hmm. head and say. Oh, then you have to train them. No, no, your head is that. You see, my, you see, this way. So they were taught this, this these distinctions, which is okay. It's a natural flow of this human life. But but for those who are interested interested in satsang and coming to this, you see, then we can look at these things and say, how did these actually come about? This me, mine, me and you, this duality. If this is advaita, then when you explore. What dvaita is, then you can see that the naturalness is advaita. There is no distinction, no duality. Actually, Ananta, it's yeah. happening a lot these days where these given certainties, just for the fun of it, yeah. is looked at, uh, you know, in a different uh, context. So it's possible, right, <coughs> that our uh, collective conditioning, instead of looking at birth and death as two parentheses, two ends of that, we could have also looked at a different measurement which is you wake up and you go to sleep and that gets marked as a time line. Yeah. It could have also yes. happened that way. Of course. Of course. And also there is no way of saying we can, you can answer the phone. No, just <laughs> Hello. Yeah, it's okay. So there is no real way of saying yeah. that yeah. in this realm, forget this body. You, see, you will ever have the experience of this realm ever again, or you've ever had before. You see? So you're right that birth and death are just conceptual notions that we put on top of this conceptual notion which is also sleeping and waking up or also as conceptual. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we could have played this game any which way. Yes, yes, yes. Anything can become? Anything that consciousness can fathom. This is the fathoming of it. Is it? When Guruji says that you only perceive what you conceive. There is no actual distinction between perception and conception. Is Only the mind makes that distinction. You see? That this is the process of conceiving, this is the process of perceiving. You see, it puts this cause effect type relationships everywhere. But uh, what is the will of consciousness? This. You see? Is it writing the, its will in a diary and then saying, okay, today I'm going to implement all this, my willing? <laughs> it doesn't seem like it's like that. Just this naturally, in its existence is its will. There's a thought which is coming, which says that consciousness is so irresponsible. Consciousness is irresponsible? <laughs> 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 how, how are children on the playground? <laughs> if it cannot be heard. How would it be? <laughs> yeah, it, it, it seems ridiculous even as that thought was arising. Yeah, it's okay. All thoughts are just fun. <laughs> um, in the previous conversation, we were talking about uh, inward and outward segments. Yes. Uh, sometimes it happens. Uh, like uh, I'm in a, I'm in a situation, um, maybe an intense situation. The third person is uh, putting forward some intense situation. The third person. Yeah, like uh, the. Who's the second? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the second is an observer, maybe. Three. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Like the second person, maybe the second person. There's so another one is telling you something. Yeah. Okay. The other one is telling you something. It's an intense situation. Um, I don't know, it's like what's right, what's wrong. Yeah. I cannot decide, not yeah. phenomenally. Yes. Uh, when I think from inside, like from my inside, 
I don't know what's right, what's wrong. And I cannot get into any conclusion. Yeah. I cannot answer anything. Yeah. Um, without not a fear of me judging it as a right or wrong, yeah. I would not uh, speak something. Without not a fear of me judging it right or wrong, I would not speak something. Speak something. Okay. I don't want to be right or wrong. Ah. I don't want. I don't know what it is. Hmm. So, I am pushed into kind of an outward silence also because I don't know what's right or what's wrong. Yes. These are the moments. Uh, which it can be. It can be that outward silence is good also. It's not a bad thing. I'm not saying uh, you must. Uh, be inward silent but outwardly keep speaking. <laughs> That's not what I'm saying. <laughs> this is, uh, and we'll come back to this point, but I just want to say that I feel like I should repeat this in every satsang. Just because X and Y are opposites, okay? X is being negated. The nature of the mind too is to automatically conclude, therefore Y is true. You see? But I'm not saying that at all. You see? I'm negating X, I'm negating Y, <laughs> and I'm negating negating. <laughs> you see, I'm living without any branch. You see, so, so when I said that it is not about just an outward silence, me didn't mean that I'm not suggesting outward silence. It's good. That's why we have silent retreat also. It's good. But uh, um, if you find yourself getting outwardly silent, it's a is whatever it is. <laughs> because I want to, uh, you, you notice the natural conditioning here also was to say it's a good thing, but uh, I don't want to do too much of these opposites. Let's just say it's not a bad thing. There's a subject these days. Uh, mm -hmm called Polarity Management, which is being introduced uh, to help, uh, uh, I think, like we've been through a system where we have to choose only one right answer, right? Yes. That's how we've been tested and conditioned okay. to respond in every situation. So this actually is an area where uh, we are um, help. It's a subject which is being introduced in management to tell, uh, to teach that while there can be polarities, it doesn't have to be either or. Mm. It can be and, uh, you know, everything. Yes, yes. And where you yes. can have multiple answers yes. for a given situation. It's good. I like it. But still, it's like yeah. playing within the box. Yes. Yeah. There should be a subject like this is that subject if there is, which is like okay, yes. what is not in that box? <laughs> it's we can say okay, it can be both, it can be neither, or it can be all of them. You see, all of that, but still operating in this yes. the box of labels. You see, what is that which is not in the box? You see, not in the box at all. And that is what we are. The mind, in a way, is trying to grasp at, you see, and feeling at, you see, and therefore there's like this um, either tired, frustrated seeker, or or grasped at something which then is like checking this concept, you see, against everything else and saying, I think I got it, you see, and therefore is the spiritual ego, you see. So either way, the outcome of this grasping is suffering one way or the other. And this grasping is very strange actually because without picking up the intent to know why or to know what, it is actually just so naturally known <laughs> without distinction. saw this um, very beautiful huge ant hill and went to the farm, Avani farm, very beautiful place and uh, this ant hill, then Pratap was saying it's a 
full system you see the whole system works so beautifully you see every ant no ant is out of place it's like raindrops <laughs> no raindrop falls out of place you see same way like this is ants no ant is out of place everything is operating in this beautiful way but i don't feel like they are thinking about it and saying <laughs> okay you 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 do this you do that and i'm going to tell him this or tell him they do seem to have some communication you see but it's not like we would say you know where is the whiteboard the spreadsheet <laughs> all of the things and still it operates so beautifully but you can look at so many more intricate examples you see the flower blooming no petal is out of place and every one is unique you see all fingerprints no fingerprint is out of place and yet all fingerprints are unique all snowflakes are unique and yet perfect as they are you see what is this intelligence which is doing all this Something getting so angry is also just a thought. I know. Let <laughs> <laughs> me <laughs> 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 yeah, just rile up that a bit more. Also. I know what the thought is. Also, I didn't know it was fire. Yeah. That's the only thing I can do. Can I have a chance? Yeah. 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 What is the message in the anger? No, no, I'm not listening to that. <laughs> 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 no, I mean, it has many rubbish things to say, but it's very physical problems. Yeah. It's very energetic. So don't label it anger. Yeah, I'm trying everything. Meet it, <laughs> meet it fully, but don't presume to know what it means. Can you truly say that you have experienced exactly this very sensation in its same quality and quantity before? You cannot say. So, what use is the label? We were talking about intermittent fasting, and one time Garima was doing it, and Guruji was guiding her a bit. So, he introduced us to this term called hangry. <laughs> <laughs> you know this hungry it's hungry and angry when you're fasting first first and you're a bit hungry then the anger also so hungry so there's so many emotion you can you have a label for every emotion that comes but when we say this is what it is then we put it in that box and we put all our life story conditions around it we presume to know we know what anger is it is like an attacking energy you know this kind of all of this is from our memory You see, so we leave the innocence of just what is appearing, and put it in that box of, ah, I know what this is, and then it coincides with all our relationships with it in the past. You see, so we leave it fresh, like you don't have a label for it, like this is what it is. There's a lot of chat. <laughs> there seems certainty to believe in thought that there is sensation of pain in body. What is the pain without thought? To whom is it happening? This is good inquiry. This good question, and this this conversation also is a bit like this. So it's good to see, my dear. It's good to explore. I'm not bringing you to any truth about any of this. Just be clear about that. I'm just. Bring you to the point where you can drop your uh, notion that this is what it is. What you think about it is what it is. Is the notion that is being questioned. Then 
is it true that all you speak is also a thought yes 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 a special nonsense not even special special is also just a thought is it i'll be a useful one useful special is it uh, if the expression feel certain is that to you are holding on to thought if an expression if the expression feel certain is that to you are holding on to thoughts no it is not about the expression seeming certain or not is it that's why when many times something you say very like very convinced i say that is this like coming out of your mouth and you now you have to keep up to it or do, is it really something that you are believing inside like we had this conversation the other day where a certain position was taken you see and then i was just saying but this is how it works you see it just the, some words escape <laughs> like that and because they seem to have come from this body then we feel like no i must live up to this you see i must own these you see and that is like the attachment you see so a lot of uh, statements which seem so certain you know, come from the mouths of teachers <laughs> well at the same time they saying i know nothing i know nothing <laughs> you know so that is why all these examples of steak um, thorn harpic we should so this thing you know, so that uh, these are not mistaken to be some certainty but just serve the purpose of shaking up our certainty you know you see and then they they they're done you see we can't even be certain about that and generally interested and generally interested even though i might sound a bit annoying you never sound annoying at all <laughs> can't help it <laughs> not at all father your words are like lightning bolts they they shock the being out of its complacency this sh- the shock the being out of its complacency thank you the best mantra the best mantra thank you something needs to happen or done to stop this grasping of conclusions yes is also just a thought have to go thank you is also just a thought the <laughs> 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 soon i'll be saying that also <laughs> Father, the purpose of Zen Kuan is to try the mind. <laughs> That would be to say too much, but in a way, to tie your intellect, to tie your world view. You see, to tie your world view, which is just like that, so limited. You see, so we get tired of this perspective, which seems so just confined to just the boundaries that we can make mentally. but to say that they have a purpose would also not be if you can say that something is zen it is not zen <laughs> you can ignore my previous message as it's no longer relevant love <laughs> read it out completely okay and it's not really a box which needs escaping also You see, it is just a box which is naturally not present, like right now. You You're not living in your constraints, in your limited ideals, right now. None of us are. Right now, there is no difference between you, me, you see, any teacher that you might look up to. No difference. You see, the only seeming difference seems to be that when these offerings come. You, they still may seem attractive to some, and may not seem as attractive to others. That's it. Is it? And the offering comes to God to consider Himself to be something small. In some aspects of God, that offering seems to be picked up, and in some aspects of God, that offering seems to not be picked up.
That is why in a way we call this consciousness, speaking with consciousness. Although that's another set of nonsense. Actually. I'd like to see that if you send me that verse. Yeah, he's got it actually for the library. I, I, I would see. bring it up. Yeah. Actually, I spoke to him last night and he was. Oh, Robert Adams. No. <laughs> 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 well, why not? <laughs> it's just a limiting thought that yeah. you can't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really that is nothing but emotion. Directly. Yeah. I, I, I but who did you? What Dharma is? Dharma sent me these books. Uh, I mean, send the house the books, and then I open them and I started reading. So when he called me, he says. Oh, one was for Rishi, one was for the library. Oh, nice. Yes. I love to say. Question. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How do you operate in the world? Yes. Mm. How does the... A bird is newly born, okay, maybe six months old. The season has come for it to migrate north. See? Suppose that it's uh, it doesn't know what is north, south, east, west, and yet it flies. How does that happen? How are you sitting now? Huh? It's sitting because of memory. The body remembers. <laughs> Do we know any of this? <laughs> How many processes are happening in your body right now? Um, if if we give some apparent reality to it, millions, isn't it? So who's running all of those? How you beat your heart? So, is that not operating in this world? See? What we are talking about mostly when this question comes is how do I pay my bills? How do I um, take care of my relationships? See? All of these things. And um, all of these examples that we have given that um, all these trillions of planets are moving, all of these bodies are functioning within each body is like a mini universe apparently, you see, all of that is functioning. So there seems to be a supreme intelligence which is doing all of this, you see. But my bills, she cannot pay. They are special, you see. For that, I have to become that green Martian. <laughs> and uh, what do we have to become? Have, can we actually ever become that? Like, how have you been running your life before you even knew of satsang? And uh, and also, okay, not meaning to sound harsh the first time I'm seeing you here, but <laughs> the fact is that if we were doing such a great job of running it, then we would not even show up in satsang. You see? So, so we've tried, mostly those who come to satsang, mostly, it doesn't have to be like that, uh, are looking for a new approach. You see, I've tried running their life, I've tried taking care of things, I've tried to do this and that and the other, but it doesn't seem to have led to any lasting peace, lasting contentment. Really? So, so, you know, and this is a very common question this comes, and you know why this is? Because, in a way, <laughs> uh, it is because when we were protesting, why do I need to learn all this stuff? You see, that this is this and that is that, and this is the way I have to be and all of that, we were told. Because without this stuff, you cannot run your life. You see, our parents told us, society told us, this mind told us. You see, and now, as we see that everything is just fine without me having to be just constantly limited by my mind, the same protest is coming. That is the whole 
uh, reasoning why with, with which we were holding this stuff up that because of this I am able to run my life. You see? And now I was using, just let go, everything is fine, God is here, you see? I was like, but then, how will I run my life? This is because we were taught that all this stuff is important, because using this you run your life. But you look at doership, you look at desire, you look at duality, all these three Ds that make the ego. And uh, they're all made up. That's why I was saying earlier, how do you move your hand? Nobody knows how you do it. We don't know how to move a finger, how to run this life. <laughs> how to run this life. How does the wave decide where to go? And again, I'm telling you the same thing, which is that if X and Y are opposites and I'm negating X, doesn't mean that Y is true. Is it? Because in this paradigm of doing and not doing, both, are, both in my view are doing. Is it? In the waking state, you may say, ah, Ananta said, and he seemed quite confident about it as he spoke, I don't need to do anything else. So, uh, he said, okay, you don't need to, you're not doing any of this anyway, you see. So, what is the opposite of that, you see. Therefore, I'm just going to sit in bed all day. I'm not going to do anything. But that's also doing the not doing, no. You see, we decide to do the not doing. Because now I've to, been told that, oh, I don't need to do. You see, there's no escaping activity in this waking state. But we mistakenly call it doing. You see, even that which we call inactivity is also activity. Like lying down in bed, you might say inactivity, <laughs> but it's an activity. You are lying down in bed. You see, your body is lying down in bed. You see, so there is no escaping activity in the waking state. You see, we mistakenly call it to take it to be individual do doership, individual doing. You see, so. To do and not do does not apply to reality. It only applies once you make a boundary around yourself using notions. See? So the question of whether I have free will or not see? is secondary to, it has to be, isn't it? Secondary to who this I is in the first place. Is, it, is there free will or God's will? Is the is the popular question, isn't it? So then, if there is free will, who would it belong to? That is a question worth exploring, isn't it? And then, if you see there is only God, then the question itself falls apart. Is it? That is why Bhagwan's question of who am I gets to the root of all of this doership, desire, duality. <coughs> Like, whose life are you speaking of? How to run this life? How is it running now? <laughs> imagine somebody tried to run this life. I mean, we don't have to imagine, we just have to go to work and see all of everybody. <laughs> but, uh, you see how it is, is it? Just, but then really, like, run the life, you see? just like, Every heartbeat, every breath, every hand movement, every gesture, every word, every blink, everything. Then don't go half measure, fully, fully. <laughs> You'll see that you can't do it. It's just not possible. And then the one question that remains for many is this one that, okay, okay, all this is, I understand God is running most of this, but do I have that little free will or not? Is it? So then the question is, you who? Okay, so you have full free will, but who are you that has it? Is it? Then you'll see that this distinction, God's will and free will itself is bogus. Is it? All is moving on its own. In a way, a 
and it's 105 no meaning right Surrender is a very beautiful exploration. Once we surrender to God or to Guru, whatever we are devoted to, are we asking for like uh, daily progress report? How are you running my life? <laughs> I surrender to you, but it's not looking good. <laughs> it's, uh, stock market seems to have gone down <laughs> 7%. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I'll surrender to you and uh, my life will be all like a bed of roses. Yeah. So we feel like um, surrender is some sort of a cheat code in this game. We think, uh, in, at least the games in my generation, we used to be able to enter some things on the keyboard <laughs> and you go into God mode, you know, when <laughs> you could not be killed, you could not be shot, you know, nothing could happen. You used to be like, <laughs> it's not working. <laughs> Why is it not working? <laughs> you know, all the masters have said surrender and you're sorted. <laughs> but it doesn't come with this uh, sort of guarantee of what should happen. And that is why I feel like when I say truth for truth's sake, it's really very often every time I've said it I feel like it's more misunderstood than understood <laughs> which is also fine but uh, just like if there was no perks to this there was no benefits at all then would it still be worth it because it's true Satchit Ananda uh, if there was no promise of Ananda at the end it was just Satchit or forget even Chit only Sat as <laughs> <A> cheating <laughs> and the marketing said Satchit Ananda <laughs> Putting the spirituality like that. No bliss, get bliss, get peace, get peace. Have you seen anyone suffer as much as spiritual seekers? No. <laughs> I feel like it's the heaviest burden to carry. And sometimes spiritual so called finders are suffering much more than uh, seeker. <laughs> Those who are claiming to have found. <laughs> The burden of trying to show that you're enlightened or something like that. But inherently, Inherent. you were saying... Uh, nothing has meaning. Were you saying hypothetically that uh, if it were only sat then nothing else? Or yeah. did you say that it is really like that? <laughs> 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 you guys... <laughs> I have never ever <laughs> been able to say how it actually is. <laughs> because inherently it is like that. Yeah. 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 Well, inherently they also say it's moving towards entropy, oh, okay. which is complete disorganization. So, I don't know whether we can say either, actually. Okay, in the experience of us, like me, you know, uh, whatever it was that walked in here, or said something, there was a desire to uh, find, uh, uh, you know, uh, what is beyond those three things which you always say they all uh, are striving for. You know. So what are the three things? Achha, 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 four things. Uh -huh. So it seems to be an impulsion to move towards that, which yeah. is not really coming from Correct. a mental. It starts off, it's usually starts off in this way. It usually starts off in this way that we want 
to go beyond the three, or actually there could be even this, as you see, as you are use, using the term inherently, this inherent sense that those three or four will get better. Or that uh, it's never going to uh, uh, get be better. permanent. Uh, get better anyway, so let me go beyond. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So the the door into this can seem that way. You see, the door can have a lot of uh, marketing. <laughs> better just uh, surrender and you will have this and you will have that. I'm not saying any of this is lies, uh, by the way. Mm -hmm. But I'm saying when you open the door, you might not find what you expected. <laughs> you see? Now okay, I have to quickly say bye to my relatives and come back in a couple of minutes.